Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently did a video explaining the best video editing apps on Android. Now, video editing apps on Android have really come a long way and you can now get some great results from the devices that you typically might carry with you, your phone or your tablet. From testing a huge range of apps, my recommendations were Cyberlink Power Director and KineMaster. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper into KineMaster on Android. And we're gonna run through exactly how to edit your videos and get great results using the app. Now this video isn't gonna be a full featured review of the app. We're also not gonna cover off every feature and every tool that's available in the app. We're gonna be running through a full editing process end to end, covering everything you need to know to get you editing fast and to get great results using your Android device. We'll have a similar video coming out soon for Cyberlink Power Director on Android, which we'll link in the cards. Now, before we jump in, we're gonna be following through the primal video method, which is the most efficient editing process to help you eliminate any rework or wasted time while you're editing. We did a video on this a while back, but if you haven't seen it, you can download the PDF here to help you with your videos. So when you first open up KineMaster, before you start your editing, one of the first things you should check is the settings. So select settings, now KineMaster being probably the most advanced video editing app across any device that's not an actual PC or Mac, gives you a ton of options. But the one that I'd suggest you check first is your export frame rate, which is down near the bottom. So for me, the footage that I'm editing is 25 frames per second, PAL footage. So I'm gonna change my project or KineMaster to be working exactly the same. If the video files that you're looking to edit were actually captured with your Android device, then it's highly likely that they were actually captured at 30 frames per second. Though default of 30 frames per second is probably fine for most people. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, it's time to start your project. So hit the big button in the middle of the screen and then select empty project. So when you open it up, you've got a fairly intuitive interface. You've got your timeline down the bottom. You've got all your controls for playback, importing and exporting on the right. And on the left, you've got things like undo, redo, share, settings. You can zoom in on your timeline and you can jump straight back to the start of your video. So now that we've quickly covered the interface, the first step is to import your video files. So just select media browser, navigate through to find your footage, select the clip that you wanna use and hit the tick in the top right corner. And you'll see straight away that your footage has been dropped down into your timeline. The first step from here is to start to refine all your video footage. So you wanna remove anything that you're absolutely not gonna use in your end product. So we'll start by trimming the extra footage at the start of our video clip. So to do that, we just tap on the video clip and you'll see straight away that we get this yellow box around it. And there's a yellow handle on the left. If we tap on that handle and drag across to the right, then we can change the in point or the start point of this video clip. So we'll slide it across to just before I start talking. And we'll do exactly the same at the end. When we tap on our video clip, we get our yellow handles. We'll just tap and drag the end point of our video back to where we want our video to finish. So like I said, in this step, we're going through removing everything that we don't want in our video. So back in the middle of our clip here, I'm sure there's some sections that we wanna get rid of, maybe some mistakes or multiple takes. So we'll just pretend that this is an area that I wanna get rid of or further refine. So we'll select our video clip, and then come up and select cut, which is the picture of the scissors. And from here, you actually get some really great and really advanced editing options. The ability to be able to trim to the left of the playback head and trim to the right of playback head can give you some massive time savings if you're editing larger projects. We actually did a video on trim top and tail. It was one of the first videos that we did on this channel. I'd highly recommend that you check it out because if you're actually using your trim left and your trim right or your trim top and tail tools in any editing software, then they'll save you an absolute ton of time. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna add a cut in our timeline here. So we're gonna select split at playhead. So you can see that split our video track in two. So now if we come along to where we wanna add our next cut, select our clip, and again, select split at playhead. So now you can see that we've got three clips there. So if we select the middle clip, we have the ability to delete it by pressing the delete button. If that's a section that we don't want in our video, I'll just undo that. Or we have the ability to use those handles and really refine our edit to just remove small sections of the video that we may not want. Or to really give you some control on tightening up your edit. 
To easily help you navigate around the timeline, you can do things like pinch to zoom, to zoom in and out, and you can just swipe left and right or tap and drag left and right in order to navigate around your timeline. You can also easily reorder your clips and pick them up and move them around by just tapping on them and holding down and moving them to the location you want them. Okay, so now that we've refined our video content down to where we want it, we can add in things like B-roll. So to do that, you just select layer and then what type of B-roll you want. So in this case, we're gonna pick video. We're then gonna find the video clip that we want to use as B-roll, select it and hit the tick to drop it down in our timeline. And you can see that it's dropped it on a separate video layer. From here, we have the ability to scale, resize and reposition that clip. In most cases, you'll probably just wanna scale it up so that it fits full screen. As with any other video clips, you have the ability to get full control over that video clip. Just by tapping on it, you have the handles appear so you can adjust the start and the end time of that clip. You can split the clips into multiple clips and you can pick them up and move them around the timeline to where you want them to display. One of the biggest features in KineMaster is that it gives you the ability to have multiple video layers. So for example, you can pick up a clip and you can move it down another layer and you get another level of control or another layer of footage that you can actually have in your video project. Now this is pretty awesome because it's the closest thing you'll get to replicating full professional editing software on an Android device. You can also zoom in on your timeline or make your timeline bigger by clicking the timeline button in the bottom left corner. So for this video, we're actually not gonna use any B-roll footage. I'll just remove those now. And the next step is to add in our music track or any audio to your project. So we'll just click on audio. And in this case, the song that we want is on the phone itself. So we'll go down to folders, we'll hit download, and we're gonna import Golden Skies. So you just select the track, hit the plus button, and it's dropped down into your timeline. Then hit the tick in the top corner to get back to your editing screen. So once again, exactly the same as with any other clip in this app, you have the ability to have full control over editing your audio clips as well. You can tap on the clip, you can split it, you can pick it up, you can move it, you can adjust the time with the handles. So you really get some great control over your editing in this app. Okay, so the next step is to add in any titles. So we'll come back to the start of our clip, select layer and then text. Enter the text that you want for your title and hit OK. Now that your title's there on the screen, you can resize it or rotate it by using the two buttons on the text box, or you can just pick up the title and move it to where you want it. While we've still got our title selected, you can also add an animation to animate that title in or onto the screen. As you click on the different ones, it gives you a preview of what that animation is going to look like. So we'll just select Fade. And we'll also add on an out animation so that our title is gonna fade in and it'll stay on screen for a period of time and then it'll fade back out. They also have a heap of options around adding things like shadow, glow, outline, background color, and even the ability to add a full width background as well. Okay, so we'll come back out of here now and we'll add another title. So we'll hit layer and then text. We'll type in primal video. And then we'll just drag our title down underneath Justin Brown. Now we just need to apply the same in and out animations. So we come over to in animation and select fade and back and out animation and hit fade as well. So now when we hit play, you'll see that both titles fade in, stay on screen and then fade out. So if you wanna add in any transitions between your clips, then select the little box between your clips and the transitions panel will open. And you can see here that there's quite a few to choose from. Normally on a video like this, I wouldn't be adding too many transitions or effects in. So I'll just undo it using the undo button. Next up, we're gonna adjust the volumes on our clips. So if you wanna adjust the volume on an individual clip, then select the clip, select the volume button, and you can see you've got two options in there. The one on the left is the actual volume for that track. And because we've selected our primary video track, it also gives you the option to decrease your background music while this clip is playing by whatever percentage that you set there. So if you drop it to say 27% or minus 27%, whenever there's any noise coming or any talking coming out of that primary video layer, any music tracks will be dropped by 27%, but only while there's talking or noise from that primary video clip. So we'll leave these as default and we'll go back and we'll adjust the volume on our music clips. So select your clip, go to volume, and the slider there will adjust the volume for that music clip. 
So in this case, we'll drop it down to about 48%. If we want to fade our audio in at the start of our video and out at the end of our video, go to settings and then under audio, enable fade in. Then just drag the slider to the period of time that you want the audio to fade in over. And you can also do the same for fade out here as well. And if we come across to video, then you can turn on and off and adjust the period of time for the fade in and out from black for your video as well. The next step is to color correct your video. Now as KineMaster only lets you apply color effects to individual clips, if you think you're gonna do lots of cuts or edits in your video, then it might be worth color correcting your videos first up instead of at this point in the process. This is something that I'd normally advise against because color correcting up front makes your whole editing process slower. You'll notice a decent performance hit in your editing because your software is gonna try and re-render all your color effects every time you change something in your timeline. So to color correct your videos, you actually have two options in KineMaster. The first is to add a video filter. So select your video clip and choose color filter. So you can see you get quite a few options in here for preset filters or preset looks. They're pretty much the same sort of thing that you'd find in Instagram. So for me, and as far as I'm concerned, I think they're pretty consumer grade. Whereas to get a professional result, you'd actually wanna use the color adjustment tools. So we'll go back out of here without applying anything and we'll select color adjustment. So in here, you've got three simple sliders, one for brightness, one for contrast, and one for saturation. Between these three settings, you should be able to get some really good results with your videos. So you can see the difference in our timeline now. Okay, so now that your video is edited, it's time to export. So hit the back button to go back to the main menu, select your video project, and hit share. And from here, you can save your video direct to your gallery. You can also send it to YouTube, Facebook, Google Plus, or Dropbox. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that big subscribe button. If you haven't downloaded it yet, make sure you grab our free guide running through the most efficient step-by-step -step process for editing video. It's the ultimate process for creating your videos faster without all the unnecessary rework and double handling that I've seen chew up a ton of time for my clients and students over the years. Just hit the link inside this video or below in the description and download it now. We'll see you next time.